Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to learn how to solve numericals on motion under gravity, which is also one of the contents of rectilinear motion. So before we move on to the numericals, first of all, let us go through what actually motion under gravity is. So the study of vertical motion of a particle, whether it is downward or upward, under the influence of gravitational acceleration, is nothing but motion under gravity. Now to solve the numericals on motion under gravity, uh, we are going to use equations of motion. So we all are familiar with these three equations of motion. V square is equal to U square plus twice AS. V is equal to U plus AT. And S is equal to UT plus one half AT square. But while using this particular equations for motion under gravity, we are going to replace A by G, that is gravitational acceleration. And with that, we also have to consider whether the journey is upward or downward. So if the journey of a particle is upward then we have to take g as negative and the altered versions of the equations of motions that we have to use will be likewise v square is equal to u square minus 2 gs v is equal to u minus gt and s is equal to ut minus one half gt square where v will be final velocity u is initial velocity s is the distance between initial and final point t is the time required to travel from initial to final point and likewise, when we are going for the downward journey, we have to take G as positive and subsequently we will be having these three equations of motion where G is positive. Now we will move on to the numerical. Uh, the statement goes like this. A ball is thrown vertically upwards with, from the ground with an initial velocity of 20 meters per second. Determine first maximum height reached by the ball, second time taken to reach the maximum height and third one total time of flight. Now we will move on to the first determination that is to find the maximum height reached by the ball. So we will go through its picturesque wave where uh, you can see uh, the initial velocity of the ball is 20 meters per second and then as it is thrown upward it will move up until it reaches the maximum height and for maximum height velocity is equal to 0. So now it was thrown with an initial velocity of 20 meters per second and it was on upward then this is the initial point this is the final point so this is the phase of consideration so this is our initial point this is our final point and for this we are going to find out the distance traveled h max so now to solve this uh, already we have discussed we have three formulas with us and as it is an upward journey g is negative so out of this three you use one so as our aim is to find out the distance that is s we have two formulas related to s v square is equal to u square minus twice gs and s is equal to ut minus one half gd square but out of these two uh, if we'll check out the feasibility uh, for the first formula if we'll go with the first formula we are known with v we know what is u we know g so only unknown is s so we can go with first equation now if we want to go with the third one the issue is we also have one more unknown that is t and that's why we have to go with the first one and rightly we have selected the first one here and then just put down the values we know final velocity is 0 initial velocity is 20 then the only unknown here is h max and then solving it will be getting our h max which is coming around 20.39 meters now we'll go on to the next solution uh, that is to find out the time taken to reach the maximum height so by using the other equation of motion v is equal to u minus gt uh, in this equation we know v we know u the only unknown is t and as we are finding out for the maximum height where final velocity is equal to zero solving this we will be getting our time for maximum height and which also we can call it as ascent time and it is equal to 2.04 seconds now to find out the last determination that is total time of flight the formula is ascent time plus descent time and now as in this case the point of projection and point of landing us at same height then ascent time is equal to descent time and that's why the total time of flight will be the twice of the ascent time which is coming equal to around 4.08 seconds thanks for watching the video